In this video, I want to take a look at a game which I played in uh, 2019. And, well, this was a casual uh, game. So the opening is a bit strange. Sometimes I do like to play things that are offbeat. So my opponent wanted to go into a French defense, but I decided to play b3, um, which is known as the Horwitz attack. And well, my opponent, I guess, was not prepared for it. And I was just kind of making it up as I went along because sometimes I do get a little tired of uh, just playing a uh, theory. So after knight c6, I just continued uh, my development with bishop b2. Uh, and my opponent decided to do the same thing. So I believe this has not been seen in uh, Master Games. It has been seen by amateur players uh, many times. So again, just continuing my development not really going uh, super deep into the theory or what the engine's suggestions are because I don't think it's really relevant um, I don't think you're gonna see this type of uh, opening or pawn structure in your games so really uh, just going by general principles should be enough. So after bishop e7, uh, bishop e5 allows a6, and then I kind of have to trade the bishop for the knight. And well, bishop c4 is not really going to do anything because the pawn on e6 is sort of a uh, blunting the bishop so even though it looks passive I think it is the best square for the bishop now the engine suggests uh, d4 and well there's a few moves here for black I mean this is not a, a forced line by any means d5 is a move but uh, knight f6 is also a move and uh, you could go knight bd7 and after d5 uh, e5 and uh, well probably knight e4 is uh, the more testing move although uh, retreating is probably more in accordance with uh, the French defense the only problem with that is that uh, you don't have the immediate break uh, with c5, which is what you want to do in a French defense. And here my opponent played f6, which I don't like at all. I'm already the evaluation is going up. Uh, you're not developing a piece. You are taking away, away the... Uh, best square for the knight to go and you're also weakening this uh, diagonal which as you will see later on in the game it became a, a crucial part of many variations in which black is losing because uh, this diagonal opened up So again, just continuing my development. And well, now after bishop c5, now I want d4 because I'm gaining a tempo. So I, bishop c5 just doesn't make any sense. And this is kind of the practical aspect of just playing um, offbeat lines. Just something that your opponent is not familiar with and they just pretty much are left to their own devices they will make mistakes so 
here I think uh, bishop e7 is better than bishop e4. I am uh, spinning a tempo on a3, but well, after uh, the trade, white is just uh, much better. I think black should have just uh, gone back with the bishop and uh, claimed that while well, the bishop is well placed on e7 and my bishop is uh, not so well placed on b2 because um, f6 has been played and while well, I spend a tempo on a3 And well, here my opponent continued uh, development. Interestingly enough, the computer suggests uh, the other knight to um, e7, but I, that's just uh, pretty ridiculous. I mean, I don't, I don't know of any human who would actually play that move. And well, here I played d5 because I can. I mean, my opponent let me, so I'm getting the space. I'm attacking the knight. Uh, I think Ripka likes this move, going back with the knight, thinking it's the lesser of uh, two evils, allowing the trade, and after bishop takes, uh, you actually have this interesting move knight g5 hitting the bishop uh, threatening to come to f7 forking the queen and the rook and you might be wondering well what happens if you take bishop h5 check uh, you could block with the bishop but it's uh, a little bit better than uh, just playing g6, but basically white is still better in both uh, variations. So after you go back with the bishop, you can't trade uh, uh, bishops. If you trade, well, you f3 and you have the check mating threat on f7 and you're also uh, hitting the rook. So after something like Rook of eight, well, you're just gonna drop this rook, and that should be game over. So, my opponent uh, took the pawn, which is what I was expecting, and after takes 95, my, my opponent uh, didn't want to go back to b8 uh, and just get squeezed, so instead, he did, just offers the pawn. Now, here I'm not gonna take the pawn because, well, if I take, then I thought he could take with the knight, maybe even with a bishop. But actually, this is okay for uh, white. You can't take the pawn. For that reason, I played d6. Now, taking, you have to castle, and after like c4 and c6 white should be much better again if you take well there are several moves that win I mean bishop h5 check is winning uh, taking on g7 is uh, the best move but even just castling and I mean you're still basically winning so you can't really do that and I was uh, very happy for finding this move uh, d6 although if my opponent plays correctly uh, knight g6 it shouldn't be that big a deal I mean white is slightly better but not uh, nothing uh, significant but after taking the pawn I mean this is just a blunder uh, after this white is 
almost winning. And after queen takes, my opponent castled. Uh, the engines think that this is the best way to try to survive. And after bishop takes, uh, you trade check and you trade queens. And you're only up a pawn, but this is an isolated pawn, which is going to be weak. And, well, because there's so few pieces left, then uh, this means that you're playing for two results with the white pieces. You're either going to win the game or it's going to be a draw. It's pretty much impossible to lose this position with the white pieces. But after castles, uh, bishop c4 check. It, I think this is a very important move and uh, Stuckfish likes it a lot. After King uh, h8, uh, which is forced, I played Bishop to xd5, which uh, Stuckfish does, doesn't like. Well, none of the engines like it. They think it's a blunder. Uh, They'd rather take with a queen with the threat of checkmate on g7. But after this, well, I was a little hesitant to play this because if you, once you stop the checkmating threat, say knight f5, there are ideas of rook e8, and even if you can't play that, you still have a queen e8 and you can force the trade of queens and I thought maybe there's no attack here but you just uh, castle queenside and black can play something like rook c8 but I mean you have ideas of h3 and g4 maybe not right away because the rook would be hanging but White is definitely better here, although this is still very doubled edge, and I mean black does have ideas like uh, a5 or a6 and b5, so not so easy to play in a blitz game. After bishop takes. Uh, my opponent blundered with queen e8. Now I'm not gonna go into all of the variations. And here I just went uh, crazy. I played uh, bishop takes with check. Uh, I'm assuming that we were running low on time, or at least my opponent was. That's why I played this move. Um, knowing that I probably will have some sort of attack if my opponent doesn't play the best defensive moves which is pretty much a given when you're uh, running low on time and well after uh, this check Knight g6 hitting the queen. Here, uh, black is just better. Even though, uh, well, if you count the material, I do have two pawns for the piece. I did think about uh, playing queen uh, b2, maintaining the pin on the rook, but then decided to play. Uh, Queen g3, which is probably better than uh, queen b2, but the engines say that uh, with best play, they're both uh, losing for white. And we'll hear my opponent just uh, blundered again, because I, like I said, it's not easy to play defensive moves, especially uh, in a blitz game. 
so well I took a pawn with check so I have three pawns for the piece my king is a lot safer I have a rook on the seventh rank which is uh, fantastic and well my opponent just retreated and now I wanted the piece I'm up three pawns my king is safer this bishop is uh, really good on this diagonal this rook is cutting off the king on uh, along this file I'm pretty much just winning at this point here my opponent uh, checked I obviously cannot go to uh, d8 because well rook d8 check uh, probably leads to checkmate but even if there isn't that uh, queen e1 check would uh, win the rook. So, uh, king b1, pretty much the only move. And after b5, uh, I took the pawn. Now my opponent uh, played rook a6. Now, I obviously missed this move, otherwise I would have taken with the bishop, not allowing rook a6 because the threat is obviously queen a1 uh, mate. Unfortunately for my opponent, queen c3 check is uh, mate in 2. You can block it with the knight and then block it with the uh, rook, but you're gonna get mated. So, yeah, I think this was a interesting game especially because of the opening and uh, well if you like the video uh, please do like share and subscribe and thank you for watching